Hey everyone and welcome to this new video. Today we're going to be creating two types of loading animations. We're going to create a loading bar and also we're going to create a spinner animation. I find loading animations very useful especially for usability tests because they make the user feel they are using a real product which is really beneficial for this type of test. But without any further introduction, let's get into it. Okay, so now we are in Figma and I already created this success screen. So basically after our loading animation, we want to end at this screen. And I, I saved this primary color and I will be using that color for almost, almost all my components, but feel free to choose the color you want. And we're gonna start with the loading bar because it's a little easier than the spinner animation. And for the loading bar, we're gonna start by creating a frame, and I will be using an iPhone 13 mini. And I will change I will change the name to loading bar. Sorry, loading bar. And inside this frame, I will create a rectangle. I will adjust the width of the rectangle to be to 96 and the height to be 18. And I will want to make the border radius to be 50, so I have round corners, and also I want to center this inside my frame. Now I want to duplicate this rectangle, and for the for the progress bar, I will change the width to 290 and the height to 12. And of course, I want to center these two elements, and I want to change the color of the progress bar. And I will use my primary color for that. I will also add some effects to make it look a little bit better. So I will come here to effects and I will look for an inner shadow. Um, and I will change the opacity to 12. Also for the progress bar, I will add another inner shadow. But this time I want the inner shadow to be lighter. I will change it to white. And I will change keep the opacity to 25. So that Kind of, that way we have like a round effect in our in our progress bar. So this is the final state. So we, now we want to create the preview state of our of our loading bar, and also I will have a mid state. So it has the the animation has kind of stop in the middle, and it'll imitate like a real loading bar. So for this one, of course, we want to make the width to be as little as possible. And for the mid state, we want it to be around the middle. So let's keep it like that. And now I need to add the animations. I I need to move from this loading bar to this one. And I want these to be after delay. I don't I want the delay to be a little short, so I will put it to a hundred. But I want the animation to long to last longer. So I need to change this. To smart animate and I will change this from linear to slow and I will want this to be around 60 hundred milliseconds and now from the middle state to the last state I want again to use after delay I don't want a long delay so I will keep it like 200 and but I will want again the animation to last longer and I will put this to 1000 and now to get to the success screen, I'll move again. I will add a, an, a, an animation there again after delay. I want the delay to be 100. So basically right after we get to this one, we get to the success screen. And I don't need it to be a, a smart animation. I can make it dissolve. And I can make this 200. So let's test it. So we click on the flow and start loading right away and then start in the, stay in the middle a little too long and then get to the final state and it goes through our success screen. So maybe we can make the delay of this one like a hundred too. And here also we can maybe put uh, 50. So let's test it again start loading right away i like that stay in the middle a little shorter and then it goes till the end and to our success screen okay now let's create our spinner for the spinner we will need to create a component and later i will explain why we need a component for the spinner but not for the loading bar 
So to create a component, let's start with a circle. And I want the circle to be of 133. Once I have the circle, I click the circle. I click in this small little circle there, and that will allow us to create an arc. Once you have an arc, you can create a hole inside your inside your circle. Let's pick a width, kind of like that. And then I want to close this arc again. Once I have the circle this state, I can choose my primary color. And actually, I I will change from solid to angular now i will have it like this once i have the circle like this i want to create the top of my circle and for that i will need another smaller circle and i want the diameter of this circle to be the same as the width of my or at least similar to the width of my bigger circle and i want to change it to my primary color again so now now that we have it like this we can select and create a component once we have it as a component let's group the inner elements and let's change the name to spinner okay now i need to create another variant of this component actually i will need to create three variants and now i need to rotate the variant so we have the rotation effect so this is the default now for the variant number two i need to select the spinner before i rotate the component so don't rotate the variant itself rotate the spinner select the spinner and then you come here and change the and uh, rotate this 90 degrees now we're going to do the same for variant number three select the spinner and this one will be 90 times two and for the last one again select the spinner and for this one will be 90 times 3. Now that we have our four variants, we need to create the animation. Select the first one, go, go into prototype, and we connect it to the second one. We change from on tap to after delay. We change after delay into one millisecond, and we keep this as smart animate and linear. Remember to put it in linear. Otherwise, you will have a weird animation in your spinner. So we're going to do the same for the second variant. Connect to the third one. Move these to after delayed. Again, one millisecond. And remember, for the animations, need to be the variant itself, not the spinner. And now, connect to the last one. Change these to after delay. One millisecond is more animated linear, and the last one to close the loop, we wanted to connect to the to default state again. After delay, one millisecond. Now we have our spinner, and we need to create our frame that will contain our spinner. Again, I will look for iPhone 13 mini. I will change the name of this one to spinner, and I will copy an instance of my default state spinner, and I will move it to the middle of my frame. So basically, the spinner will rotate indefinitely. So I want this frame to end at some point. So this frame, the animation of this spinner frame will actually be the one that determines the duration of my loading. So I will connect this to the success screen and I will change the after delay. And here I, de I define the, the loading duration and I will put it to 2500. And here I can change it to dissolve or and 200 doesn't matter. And let's see, I will create a flow, a new flow here. And let's see how it looks. Nice. So we have our spinner and it goes to our success screen. So the reason why I didn't use a component for my loading is loading screen. I could use it, but it's easier to just create this as, as a screen or as a frame because basically the duration of my loading is when the bar gets to this point i can also create a component and then try to synchronize the duration of the component with the frame but i think for the loading bar it's not necessary to make it a component but that's definitely very useful when you want to use this spinner and that's it
we have our spinner animation and also our loading bar animation. If you found this video useful, please like the video. It's really helpful for the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to learn more about Figma or other prototyping tools like Protopy, please follow me and see you on my next tutorial. Bye-bye.